Uh, I spoke with Beth Schwartz and Mark Guggenheim this past Friday and then Greg Berlanti this past Friday night and it was the decision of WB and CW and Beth and Greg and Mark in a very mutual way um, based off of, of what they thought was best for the show creatively and and being very honor, honorable and respectful as it pertains to to my wishes that we were going to end after a 10 episode run next year. And I'll miss that a great deal, but something tells me uh, even when I'm done, I, I won't be gone. If you've watched the Arrowverse, you should understand that. Thank you very much, guys. There'll be more from me. I'm sure that I'll get a chance to talk more about it, but I wanted you to hear about this from me. I think, um, I think it's been a good run. It's no supernatural, but it's been a good run. All right. Thank you. I love you all. I will propose a toast to appreciating what you have, however long you might have it. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. As you guys may have seen, Stephen Amell just confirmed that Arrow Season 8 will be the final season. There'll be 10 episodes, so I'll explain what's going on, why it's ending, and what's going to happen to all the characters in present day, and what the future of the Flash DC TV universe is going to be. Remember, this is the comic book universe, so there's no reason to freak out that the show is ending because the characters will live on. He makes a couple clear teasers in there, like he says, if you know about the TV shows and how they work, you know what I mean when I say that I might not be done, even though I'll be gone. We'll do a new round of the DC Universe giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Arrow moment of all time on the video. First things first, we just have to say what a class act Stephen Amell has been these last 10 or so years that he's been working with the TV show. We've only been watching it up to season 7 right now, but they spent a lot more time than that developing the show and working on everything. So at the end of everything, for him, it will have been almost a decade of his life. Way back when my YouTube channel was just getting started, he was one of the first celebrities that actually reached out and said, hey, this is really cool. I like the videos that you're making. It was probably the best encouragement that I could have gotten from anyone. Since then, he's just continued to be one of the coolest, realest people in Hollywood. But on to the important stuff, just breaking this down top five style. Number five, why is Arrow ending? So Steven explains in his video there, in a very candid way, that he just feels like they've told the story that they set out to tell, and they don't want to be one of those shows that limps to the ending. He makes a Supernatural joke, like we had a good run, not quite as good as Supernatural, but we had a good run. It doesn't have anything to do with the ratings. I'm sure they would continue making Arrow for 12 seasons if Steven wanted to stick around for that long. But he just says that he feels like it's time for him to move on and do other things. So that means working on films, other potential TV shows in the future. I'm sure sometime early next year we'll find out what his next projects are going to be outside of the DC TV universe. Pretty standard explainer for why they're closing up shop. No big surprise there. But number four, what's going to happen to the other actors and characters in present day? The probably, as you would expect, bounce around the other TV shows. So Stephen Amell says when he made the decision to officially, you know, say, time to go, like maybe we should close this down in the next couple of seasons, he hoped that the show would continue to live on in the DC universe. And when he said that, he means, obviously, the other characters continuing forward on the other TV shows. So which actors, which characters would go to which of the other shows? Starting with OTA first. So Diggle would probably cross over with The Flash because he's already done that, and probably with the Batwoman TV show. Like they just did an Argus crossover with Lila because they did King Shark and Grodd. So Diggle would do stuff like that on The Flash. Arrow and Batwoman are both kind of like crime drama TV shows. Batwoman will be a little bit darker, just like Arrow's a little bit darker. So the character of Diggle already works pretty well within that type of genre. Felicity would also probably do the same thing. She would go on The Flash, just like she's crossed over in previous seasons. She could also cross over to the Batwoman TV show to do the exact same thing that she does on Arrow. Be the woman in the chair for Batwoman if they needed some special help. The other characters in the future timeline, like you have adult Mia Smoke, you have adult Connor Hawk and William. If they come back and guest star, it'll probably be on Legends of Tomorrow just because the time travel is an easy way to explain how you can pluck those characters out of 2040. Because right now they are in the year 2040, which is way further in the future. And all the regular TV shows that take place in present day will just continue forward with their next episodes like they normally would. So you can't really have those future characters cross over onto The Flash unless somebody is time traveling. 
So it's just a little easier to explain how they pop up on Legends of Tomorrow because the legends are bouncing around a bunch, even though I do have thoughts about how much further that show is going to continue because their ratings are also declining so they might close up shop after season 5 as well. Then you have characters like Black Siren and Black Canary in present day. They would also probably continue to cross over with The Flash and Batwoman. Now nobody has gone on Batwoman because that show hasn't happened yet, but both of those characters actually originated on The Flash. Black Canary came from Central City even though technically she's an Arrow character and Black Siren crossed over with Zoom during Flash Season 2, so that's where she came from. Number three, I know you're asking, does this mean that the Batwoman TV show is going to replace Arrow in the DC TV weekly schedule of episodes? Probably, but not right away. Not till the second half of the season in 2020 after Arrow has completed its 10 episode run. Right now, we don't know how many episodes of the Batwoman TV show that they're going to do. They're only filming the pilot. They have not picked it up to series yet. We'll find out about that in the next month or so. Unless something goes terribly, terribly wrong, odds are pretty good that they'll pick it up and it'll get at least 13 episodes per season, if not a full 22, 23 like the other TV shows. Number two, really big question of the hour. Does this mean that Oliver Queen is going to be the one who disappears during Crisis on Infinite Earths? Someone actually sent me this picture. Thank you. I don't know where this came from, but somebody already mocked this up. Remember, the Flash TV show in the Nora storyline with Reverse Flash is dealing with this whole problem of the future newspaper because currently it's still Flash vanishes in crisis. Per the teaser, during last year's Elseworlds crossover, Oliver Queen made a bargain with the Monitor. This is that clip. So remember, this is a very big teaser. I think this tells you exactly what's going to happen. I know what happens to Barry and Kara. Hmm. Now you're here in the faint hope I can alter it. Well, you just said you were a god. Now, I don't think you're testing us to see if we're strong enough. I think you're testing us to see if we are good enough. The universe is a complex piece of machinery, and balance must be maintained. One change requires another. How would you propose I keep the balance? He says balance must be maintained. What do you offer in exchange? So I think the idea is they're implying Oliver Queen offers to sacrifice himself against the Anti-Monitor or whoever the villain is going to be for Crisis on Infinite Earths. I really hope that it's going to be the Anti-Monitor, but Stephen Amell's teaser in his little explainer video about why he's ending Arrow says that he might be gone but not completely done in the DC TV universe means exactly what you think it means. So yes, Oliver Queen probably vanishes in Crisis but in a post credit scene, they do a Batman Final Crisis twist as a callback to the very first episode of Arrow where Green Arrow washes up somewhere mysterious on a beach or something like that in a scene mirroring the pilot episode. So he's vanished, seemingly dead, but technically not dead, which is also kind of paying reference to the Flash Crisis on Infinite Earths twist where he seemingly dies, sacrificing himself, saving the entire multiverse, and later we find out via the Jeff Johns rebirth run that he had just disappeared into the speed force, he'd turned into pure energy. If you never read the Final Crisis storyline, Batman was seemingly killed by Darkseid's Omega Beams, but what they really did is they just sent him back in time, so he was time displaced, working his way back to present day. Number one though, really big question, what does that mean they're going to do for the Arrow series finale episode, which will be episode 10? The very last one, probably going to air right after the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover episodes. Until they give us some more detailed information, the most likely scenario is that the schedule for all the DC TV shows next season, The Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, is the same as it was last year. The crossover episodes are episode 9 for most of the TV shows. That's their mid-season finale, typically. So Crisis on Infinite Earths ends with a huge cliffhanger, multiverse-shattering consequences like Psycho Pirate says, worlds will live, worlds will die, and the DC TV universe will never be the same. Oliver Queen disappears as a result of his sacrifice. Everybody's just left wondering what's going to happen next and we have to wait till the second half of the season on The Flash and Supergirl, these other TV shows, to find out how they're going to carry the story forward and address all those things. The one exception to that is that the week after the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, they air the Arrow 10th episode finale is a sort of epilogue for Crisis on Infinite Earths to one, memorialize Oliver Queen. They have some sort of memorial service and address what's happening in present day with the characters going forward and the characters in the future timeline. If you haven't been watching Arrow, quick catch up, there's a team in the future that's slowly coming together. They'll be the new Team Arrow in Star City 2040. 
Connor Hawk will probably pick up the mantle of Green Arrow officially, Mia Smoke, Oliver Queen's daughter, will probably become Mia Dearden from the comics, William will probably become their new man in the chair like Felicity was in present day, and Felicity will become more of a Moira Queen type power player behind the scenes with a lot of secrets and intrigue. I feel like Arrow has had a good run. I'm sure that they have a really solid plan for how they're going to end things in a really big love letter to the fans, to the character, in a way that will also let you know how these characters will continue within the universe. So just post all your reactions in the comments below. What'll happen is, is there's more Shazam footage that'll be posting real soon. I'll do a video for that. My Captain Marvel review and Easter eggs and all that stuff. Leave your requests in the comments below. Click here to rewatch the Game of Thrones season eight trailer a billion more times and click here for this week's King Shark versus Grodd flash Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.